Thanks everyone for attending. Let's call this meeting to order at 632. So first thing on the agenda is the administrative items is to inform our agenda. Does anybody have any items that they would like to uh, add or alter on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Okay, Stuart, second by Sandy, great, thank you. Uh, any objections to approval of the agenda? All right, without objection, the agenda is approved. Next, we have our meeting minutes from our last meeting, which was in November. Uh, those are sent out ahead of time. Does anybody have any changes or alterations that they would like to make to the minutes? Okay, no. seeing none, uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the November meeting? So moved. Okay, Martin, is there a second? Second. Uh, I didn't catch who said that, I'm sorry. It was Abigail. <laughs> okay, Abigail, thank you. A second from Abigail. All right, any objection to approval of the minutes? Okay, hearing none, the minutes are approved. All right, first thing on our agenda tonight is a developer presentation for the sheets for 8289 Telegraph Road. So Mark, who do we have uh, to present this? You're, uh, you're muted. Yeah, let me, let me jump in here for a second. Um, I do want to introduce Sam Myers, our newest planner for the Office of Planning and Zoning. So um, before we jump into the developer presentation, um, I'll give Sam a minute or two to, to introduce himself. Okay, great. Thanks, Mark. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sam Myers. Been a resident of Anne Arundel County for my whole life. Recently joined the Office of Planning and Zoning, the long range planning division back in December. Um, part of that, I worked a couple of years in a, as a civil engineer, uh, mostly as their on staff environmental consultant, and then moved to be a project manager at a construction firm. Um, so, like I said, I'm very happy to be here and look forward to moving forward with you guys. Great. Thanks, Sam. Welcome. Okay, so going back to then the developer presentation. So um, from Bowler is Emily, and she's got a team here with her. Um, and Emily, also let me know if anybody's caught up as an attendee that I should be promoting to a uh, panelist. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Um, so it's me and then Brandon, who's who's a panelist. That's good. But if you could promote um, John Eidberger, um, not sure he'll say need to say anything, but he is um, representing Sheets and would like to be a panelist as well. But if there's nothing else, I can get started. Yep, go for it. All right, let me share my screen. Everyone see that? Yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for your time tonight. Um, as I mentioned, um, we have a team here to present this project um, sheets in Odenton. So again, I'm Emily Pate from Bowler. We also have Brandon Rao from Bowler, Eric McWilliams from Bowler. And then as I mentioned, John Eidberger who is representing sheets. Um, so I guess just some background and site information. So the site is located at 8289 Telegraph Road in Odenton. Um, I've highlighted it on this aerial that you can see on the screen. It is currently developed a developed site um, with two buildings, an asphalt parking lot, and a large gravel vehicle storage area. It's um, located on the west side of Telegraph Road with Mayfield Road directly to the north, Betson Avenue to the south, and Urban Street to the west, so it is bordered by four roadways. Um, <clears throat> the total site area is 2.3 acres. Um, the site is located in the industrial sub area per the uh, 2016 master plan. And we are proposing an approximately 6,000 square foot sheets convenience store with a drive through and um, 12 fueling stations. Um, just wanted to touch on the community input meeting requirements. So we do understand that a community input meeting will be required for this development. I just wanted to be clear that it will be held at a later date following this OTC meeting. Um, once we get through this, we will schedule that community input meeting. So we'll be following the code requirements for that. Um, going through some of the 
Odenton Town Center requirements. So um, just quickly glossing over some of the development requirements that I'm sure everyone's very familiar with. Um, so we are in block 16 and we have a maximum story requirement of four and a maximum FAR of one. And then it's a little bit tough to see on the screen, but a convenience store and a gas station is permitted by right in this district, which I've highlighted in yellow there. Um, now I'm gonna get into our Odenton Town Center um, package that we put together. So, um, well, I guess before I go into that, some of the roadway typical sections and street, street, streetscape requirements. So, um, as I mentioned before, the site is unique and that is bordered by four public roadways on all sides. Um, and we do have a master plan compliance chart, which I'm showing here on our um, package that we submitted to, to the town center that establishes the minimum and maximum right-of-ways, um, the building frontages, the landscape setbacks, the right-of-way required, the pavement width um, for all four of the roadways. So I'm not gonna get into the weeds of that right now, but that is located on our plan um, for your information. All right, so, this is a picture of what we submitted to um, for, for this meeting today. So this is the illustrative plan showing the green areas and the landscaping as well as the pavement and um, building areas. Um, you can see just to orient you, Telegraph Road is on the bottom, Mayfield Road on the north, Urban Street on the um, west up there, and then Betson Avenue on the south. <clears throat> we also included a link, uh, I guess I'll skip ahead to the landscape plan, which shows basically what that um, pretty picture showed in just more detail with um, meeting compliance of Anne Arundel County and a compliance chart. And then I guess what I'm going to get into now is the site plan. So zooming in a little bit here, again, Telegraph Road on the bottom. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a 6,000 square foot Sheets convenience store and gas station. Um, there are three entrances proposed on this development. So we have one entrance on Mayfield Road, which I'm highlighting with my hand right here, one on Urban Street, and then one on Betson Avenue. So we are not providing an entrance on Telegraph Road. <clears throat> the fuel canopy is located near the rear of the site and the front of the Sheets building is facing the fuel canopy. So um, Based on Anne Arundel County regulations, 56 parking spaces are required and 47 parking spaces are provided with this plan. And we also have, um, you can see here, 18 stacking spaces for the drive through um, In the bottom left and right corners, we have two activity space areas. So I'm zooming in right now on the activity space. One in the bottom left at the intersection of Telegraph and Betson Avenue, and then one in the bottom right at the intersection of Telegraph and Mayfield Road. Both of those are oriented off of the 10 foot hiker biker trail that we're providing along Telegraph Road. There are also sidewalks along all four frontages. So as I mentioned, we have the 10 foot hiker biker trail along Telegraph, and then a six foot sidewalk along all other roadways. We are providing two bicycle racks. Um, the first one is near the building um, entrance. So right here in this um, concrete area. And the second one is near the activity space to provide um, a rest area for people using the hiker biker trail. And we are also proposing <clears throat> to dedicate right away along three of the roadways. So the right away dedication is this um, gray hatch here. So we are providing right away dedication along Mayfield Road Urban Street and Betson Avenue in order to meet the OTC requirements. And we are also adding pavement width around two of the roadways to meet the OTC requirements and that's Urban and Mayfield. So both Urban and Mayfield have been widened in order to meet the OTC requirements. <clears throat> we did do preliminary um, storm stormwater management analysis to confirm that uh, and we anticipate to use four above ground stormwater facilities to treat ESD to the MEP. Um, I'm gonna keep going with the package that we submitted. So we also submitted architectural elevations. Um, what you're looking at, the front elevation is the west elevation that faces Urban Street. That's the um, elevation that's facing the canopy. So that's the top elevation here. This bottom elevation is the north elevation that faces May Mayfield Road. Um, then we have the 
east elevation that faces Telegraph and the south elevation that faces Betson Avenue. Um, we also included the canopy elevation. So you can see that we're using the matching the same materials from the building with the canopy elevations. Um, also, the drive through equipment provided some details on signage and what that would look like for um, the drive through on site. And we also have the trash enclosure, which is masonry to match the building as well. Um, we have a sign for the site that will meet Anne Arundel County signage requirements. And we also included a lighting plan. Um, this is kind of a cool lighting plan that shows where the, uh, the freestanding lights will be and how it will look on site. So that will also meet the Anne Arundel County lighting requirements and the OTC requirements as well. Um, I'm gonna pause there and see if there's anything, any questions before I jump into the next section or any comments from anyone. I have some questions. This is Martin. Sure. A couple of questions. One, the hiker biker trail you have shown there. What's the setback from Telegraph Road? Um, it is only, it is 11, about 11 feet and I am about to get into that, but I can get into it now if you prefer that. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, hang on just for a second. Then the other question I have, if you go back to the uh, canopies, uh, mm -hmm. I don't see anywhere that you've taken advantage of solar panels on those. Yes. Yeah, that's... Um, oh, go ahead, John. Speak for that if you want me to. So Sheets is investigating that. We continue to investigate that. Um, it, it's a slope roof, and we know it's an open roof area. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit of nuts and bolts here, but we 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 are progressive in looking at things like that. Uh, unfortunately, there is a payback analysis that we need to look at, and right now um, um, we'd be not able to do it. Unfortunately, at this point, with the technology change and the payback for solar panels is 15 years, with the rapid change in pace of technology coming along. I just, I don't think the technology is quite there for that to adapt into, into a facility like Sheets. It's something that we continue to look at because of our fuel offering and our store footprint in our market areas. But just, just in discussing that with, with uh, companies that do support that, it is, it is a challenge for us right now because the payback is not quite there. And with the technology changing, by the time it gets to that point, it's probably going to change out several life cycles. So it's we're going to be in kind of a a lost situation there if 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 you know with that situation at this point. So yeah, I, well maybe that's true. I haven't looked at the numbers. I'm not sure what NREL, the National Lab, has for payback periods on type of yeah. solar panel. Um, but you know we are in a, a climate emergency. I, I don't understand why we keep getting these proposals where no one considers that. Um, I, I'm very disappointed. There's all that roof area there. You could easily put solar panels on them. Um, so, so there is well, other matters that we're looking at. I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, you know, we are proposing, and Emily's going to speak towards this, we are proposing EV charging stations. Um, I'd be willing to discuss the heat island in the parking lot. Most parking lots are, are asphalt black pavement. We could condition uh, a concrete uh, pavement for you know to reduce the heat island. So we're we're looking at the full package of our offerings here, and we're figuring out you know where where the the um, the the area, the country, the world is today with all this with a fast pace changing and and you know we we are good stewards, um, but we also you know there is um, some opportunities that are still out there where the technology may not be there to adapt. And, um, you know, we, we just, we have to look at it holistically here right now. So, you know, although maybe we cannot do things at this point, there's other matters that we are, we, we can do and we are doing in our stores at this point too, so. Thank you. Mark, did you have any other uh, questions? Cause we have Colette and Stuart who also have questions. No, just, just those two, thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, I actually didn't see if Colette or Stuart had your hand up first. So honor system, whoever had it up first. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, hi, thank you so much for the presentation. I have a question about the activity spaces. What, what does that mean exactly? And what's planned on those sites? Um, and then related to that, I noticed that the lighting doesn't really cover those activity spaces. So I'm wondering, so I'm wondering if there's a connection um, 
with those because I mean ideally we don't want people biking at night <laughs> but they might and if those corners have activity spaces that are dark that would be um could be problematic depending on what you mean with activity spaces so that's sure. my first question and my second question has to do with the ev chargers and i'm wondering if they're level two or if these are fast chargers yeah and thank you for the questions i'm happy to get into them i think it would make more sense for me to go into the bonus program request because this kind of covers a lot of the questions um and maybe would answer some of them for for everyone and then i wrote them down and can come back to them if they're not okay. at the end thank that you. For you yeah that's great thanks okay and I, I think there was one other person who had their hand up Stuart, did you want to ask your question now or do you want to hold okay so Stuart's holding okay go ahead okay great thank you um all right, just, just a quick note about the modification request that we are requesting. Um, we are requesting to bypass the preliminary plan submittal and allow direct submittal of the site development plan. Um, it's our understanding that this modification will be generally accepted as the site is within the town center based on the Anne Arundel County Code section 17. It's just a note there. All right, so getting into the bonus program request, and I think Martin, this will answer um, some of your questions about the um, landscape setbacks and a couple of the things that Colette said. So first one is the Telegraph Road section. So we are requesting a 10 foot wide hiker biker trail only in lieu of the required 10 foot hiker biker trail and the five foot sidewalk. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna share the um, plan again, just so everyone can see what we're talking about. So just to orient everyone again, Telegraph Road is on the bottom here and we are providing the 10 foot hiker biker trail in this light tan color. Um, a little bit tough to see with all the trees along Telegraph, but that is where it is. And we are not providing the five foot landscape, uh, or I'm sorry, the five foot sidewalk in addition to that. Um, so the 10 foot hiker biker trail will, will provide a paved path for both pedestrians and bicycles along Telegraph Road. Um, in addition, we did work with DPW and um, received the feasibility study that they're working on for the pedestrian bike trail from Odenton to the BWI trail. Um, the study pr proposes a 10 foot path and a four foot minimum grass um, buffer from the roadway. So the road section that we're providing here, which is um, greater than a four foot buffer and a 10 foot hiker biker trail does align with the DPW study for Telegraph Road. Um, and finally, um, we, we are utilizing ESC to the MEP. So minimizing impervious area on site is an important ESC planning technique. So um, by not providing the five foot sidewalk area, we are reducing impervious area, um, which is um, uh, also per Anderson County Code and MD. And um, we believe that the 10 foot hiker biker trail can be utilized for both pedestrians and bicycles. And the five foot area is not necessary along Telegraph. Yeah, thanks, Emily. That, that's good. I was worried about it being so close to the road. It's such a busy road. So if it's set back, you say 10 feet or so. Um, Great. That's good. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. OK. So that's um, bonus program request number one. I have four others to go through. So I want to pause and make sure um, if we want to do questions now or just wait till the end. Uh, let's let's keep moving if we could. Okay. That sure. way we can uh, you can pull it all together for us. Great. Thank you. All right. So request number two is the maximum building setbacks. Um, so we are providing um, 148 building setback from for, from Urban Street, which the max allowable is 45. We have 140.5 from Mayfield Road, where the max allowable is 55, and 125 foot from Betson, where the max allowable is also 55. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to the plan so everyone can see what we're talking about. Um, so the site again is bordered by the four roadways that we talked about. Um, the, the plan proposes the Sheets convenience store to be located within the 45 foot maximum building setback along Telegraph Road. Um, based on laying the um, building here, we are not able to meet the maximum building setbacks along the other three roadways. Um, the layout was developed to provide circulation, adequate circulation of vehicles through the convenience store and drive through areas on the site and for safety and security reasons in the operation of the sheet store. So we did think about this when laying out the building um, and the property being bordered by public roads on all four sides creates a parcel that is not standard and it's not possible to meet the maximum building setbacks um, on all three roadways with this proposed use. All 
All right, moving on to request number three. So this is regarding the placement of the gas pumps and the surface parking. Um, so we are requesting to provide a surface parking lot area between the building and the public street along Urban Street, Mayfield Road Street, and um, that's an avenue. Just to get into the OTC requirements here, um, per chapter four, um, the OTC manual or master plan notes that new surface parking lot areas shall, where practical, where practical not be placed between a building and a public street or major street entrance, nor shall parking be placed in lot corners of budding street intersections. Surface parking lot areas shall be placed to the rear, between, or side of the buildings. <clears throat> so the difficulty of this property is that, again, it's fronted by four public roadways and limiting the parking design to only to one frontage as it relates to the convenience store, fuel canopy, or drive through provides difficulty to sheets in providing a safe, secure, and visible site with adequate parking and circulation. Um, and we are not providing parking between the building and telegraph roads. That is one that we're meeting, but we are not meeting on the other three frontages. All right, so request number four is regarding the landscape setback and plantings along telegraph road. <clears throat> so, um, we are providing about 11 foot landscape buffer in lieu of the required 25 foot landscape buffer along Telegraph Road. And then we are also only providing, due to limit, limited space, we are only providing 10 plant units in lieu of the required 40 plant units along Telegraph Road. And these are the requirements for, per the Anne Arundel County Landscape Manual. So getting into some justification here, um, we are meeting the landscape setbacks on three of the roadways, Urban, Mayfield, and Betson, but not the 25 foot landscape setback off of Telegraph Road. Um, in lieu of the required 25 foot landscape setback, we're providing 11.35 feet of a landscape setback, and we're providing 10 plant units in lieu of the required 40 plant units. Um, and if the landscape setback was held on Telegraph Road, the Sheets convenience store would not be meeting the 45 foot maximum building setback per chapter three of the master plan. And um, something to note about the plantings. So although we're not meeting the Telegraph Road compliance plantings, we are meeting the service lane plantings for the drive through along Telegraph Road. So um, the service lane requires 24 plant units and we are providing that with some additional shrubs as well in order to um, um, shade the uh, drive-through area service lane. So if we were to meet the 25 foot landscape setback on Telegraph Road, the Sheets convenience store, we need to be located approximately 15 feet further away from Telegraph Road, which would not meet the intent of chapter three of the master plan in our opinion. All right, this is the final bonus program request that I'm going to go through. So um, uh, request number five is to remove two of the specimen trees along the Betson Avenue frontage, which are the only two specimen trees on site. I'm going to share drawing that shows them. So the two green areas are the two specimen trees on site that were located by our, our environmental consultant, um, eco-science professionals. Um, specimen tree number one is um, this, this one right here that I'm highlighting. Um, it's a 36 inch Southern red oak. Um, it's located along Betson Avenue. If you can see the middle of the tree is located directly on top of the five foot sidewalk area that's required along Betson Avenue. Um, so in order to meet the OT, um, Oton Town Center master plan um, requirements of the five foot planting area and five foot sidewalk, um, we would have to remove this specimen tree um, in order to make this frontage work with the master plan requirements. Um, the second tree is located a little bit higher up on Betson Avenue um, and generally the same location. It's um, located in the entrance that we're proposing on Betson Avenue. Um, so the access point for this um, development along Betson Avenue was picked for a few reasons. Um, the first reason was to provide adequate stacking and um, separation from the Telegraph Road intersection. 
Um, so this entrance along Betson is approximately 280 feet from the intersection of Telegraph Road, provide adequate spacing and queuing um, and distance from the signalized intersection for safety reasons. Um, so if we shifted this entrance to the east or planned down, um, it would um, create a possible safety hazard along Betson Avenue by not providing enough queuing along Telegraph or along the intersection of Telegraph Road. And obviously we can't shift it further plan north um, because we come to the intersection of Urban Street. So in our opinion, the proposed entrance location provides the safest means of ingress and egress along Betson. Um, and it's also optimal for site circulation for delivery trucks, fueling trucks and vehicular traffic. Um, convenience store customers are able to enter the site along Betson Avenue and proceed to either the drive-through or, or on site to park and enter the store or grab um, some fuel. Um, even if we were able to shift the entrance east or plan down in order to avoid the specimen tree, the tree would still be within the five foot sidewalk area for the Odenton Town Center requirements and would still require removal in order to meet the streets, streetscape requirements. <clears throat> Our environmental consultant, um, again, eco-science professionals also confirmed a few things about the trees on their site, on their site visit. So um, both trees do not possess a combination of unique character characteristics that warrant extraordinary retention efforts in their opinion. Um, in addition, um, impact on development, so failure to redevelop the site to protect two specimen trees is in their opinion an inefficient use of the commercial property given that the site is located in the town center has been previously developed and contains no other regulated environmental resources. Um, and there are some future safety concerns with the trees. Um, a large portion of each tree's critical root zone is located within Betson Avenue. Um, so further impacts of the critical root zone would likely cause the trees to decline in health and present a future safety hazard to pedestrians and motor vehicles at the site. Um, so those are the five bonus program requests that we have. Um, I'm going to get into the bonus program proffers. Um, do you want me to keep going or take a moment? Does anyone in the committee have any questions on the, the request right now? Just one quick question um, of mm -hmm. when it comes to these plantings and you were saying which ones that they were, are they native species? Yes. So all planting, 100% of the plantings on site will be native species. Okay, great. I will get into the proffers now. <clears throat> so starting with section 3.2, the environmental proffers. So um, exactly what we just said, I think Abigail said that. Um, we're gonna provide 100% native plant species on site. Uh, the requirement for the master plan is 50%. We also are increasing the green area to be about 25,000 square feet in lieu of the required 10%. So that adds up to about 23% of the site. So we did increase the green area by 14,000 square feet over the requirement. And then, on that, please? Sure. what are you calling a green area? Um, the interior, I guess, let me go back to the um, plan. So I believe it's all the green area on interior to the site. You mean where you're planting trees or, or shrubs, shrubs or what? Um, Eric, are you able to speak to that? I don't know. Is Eric a presenter on here? Here I am. Um, could you repeat Thanks, the question? Um, the question was, what is the green area comprised of? So um, we're providing 23% green area on site. Um, and Martin's question was, what is the green area? Is it where you're planting trees? Just where area where you're um, mm -hmm. on site where you're mulching? So yeah, the, the green area represents uh, you know portions of the site that'll be pervious, um, either either in uh, with trees, shrubs, or other sort of ground cover vegetation, uh, as well as a mulch or lawn. Does that answer your question, Martin? Yeah, it's hard for me to see what that is, but okay, thank you. I have a quick follow-up question to that. So green area and 
plantings because you all are you would like to do far less plantings than are currently required. So how are you how are you creating more green area than what's required if there are so few plantings? Yeah, so the planting requirement is only along Telegraph Road. So the Telegraph Road requirement is the fewer that we're providing, but we interior to the site, we are providing more green area than what is required. Got it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, let me go back to the proffers. Um, and then I we talked this a little bit earlier, but we are providing parking spaces with infrastructure for EV charging. And I think one of the questions was about level two or three, um, which I'm not familiar with that information. I don't. Yeah, I can take that, um, Emily. We would uh, level two or greater EV charging stations. So level two or greater. So just two spaces? I mean, we're moving in that direction. So two, two spaces? Martin, when, when we move in that direction, they can always add spaces. No, nothing's okay. permanent. I, I mean, I, you know, I think it's great that they're out actually doing it. It's one of the first projects that's come in that's just offered it right up front. And um, to, if they find that their customers need more, I'm sure they'll make that decision to do more. Um, I. I'll, I have a follow-up question with the green area. I find it hard to believe there's over a half an acre of green space on this site. So, um, again, you're only required 10%. You're using it as a proffer. Okay. Um, I kind of like to, to just see where that is rather than just plant things. Um, that, that's just, just me. Sure, that makes sense. Um, could provide some sort of um, exhibit that shows that, um, if that would help. I don't have yeah. that handy right now. Okay, appreciate it, thanks. Sure. I would like to just go back to the EV stations for just a second. Mm -hmm. There are no fast chargers in this area. And so I would strongly recommend considering fast chargers, at least one fast charger. The closest to us in Odenton is all the way down 175 where the Panera is. Um, and they're usually broken. So you end up having to drive all the way to Howard County or further down to Annapolis to get to a fast charger. So it would actually be really beneficial to have a site close by that people, especially getting off of 32, would be able to go to a fast charger in the area. So can I say one thing about chargers and everything? Everybody's getting all bent out of shape about. Um, you know, when you have a gas power car, you have one place to go, gas station, okay? Most people, when they're charging at a sheet, it's an emergency situation. They just need a little bit to go. Nobody wants to sit at a sheet or a gas station for 20 minutes or a half an hour. I know the fast chargers are five or 10 minutes. A lot depends on what vehicle, et cetera. So I'm not against it. I'm not saying it's a wrong idea. I'm just saying that, um, that, that, it would be like somebody coming into your business and telling you how to do it, okay? And it is a gas station. That's what they sell. It's a convenience store. And you're right, we're moving towards it, but we're not there yet. The majority of the people are not driving electric cars and they're catering to the majority of the customers, not the minority of the customers. It's just a fact, that's business. And well, we're, here, we're here to talk about the community though. No, I understand well, that. I understand not talking that. about promoting their business. Well, go, going, well it is. And, and, and going back to oh, yes, if the community wants a charging station, somebody should create a charging station so people can sit there and charge. Well, maybe that's what this site ought to be then. That, that's, not right. the that's, not, that's not the choice. And that's not what we're getting into. But the point is, there's so many other places that people have an opportunity to charge. Someone who's an electric car is charging at home, okay? In an office building parking lot a shopping center where somebody's sitting there and parking for an hour where they can get a valuable charge. There's a dozen other places. And um, I really honestly fought hard against electric charging stations being legislated for businesses um, because I just don't think it's right. I'm not against it. I'm actually looking to get an electric car, but it's not to be dictated to the private sector on 
what they should be providing as far as that they have offered to. And again, gentleman from Sheets is here. I'm, I'm more than sure that if they have people pulling up and the customers complain that, that, that they need more, they'll put them in. But it, it's tough for us to sit here and dictate on um, on how many, how come we're not looking at how many tanks that they have there? Is that enough tanks? I don't think they have enough tanks. I think they should add another station because there's so many cars. So I, I'm just pointing that out. I mean, it just it just comes up and I understand that I really do. Um, you know, the, the solar and all that, but it, it's got to be right for the business. I, I, so, that's all. I'm just... so, to, so to let us move on, I do think though that, that Colette does bring up a good point in terms of the... The nice part about where this sheets is proposed to be located is it is actually in a great location in terms of getting on and off 32, which we know is a major through fare for going from Annapolis over to basically towards uh, towards Howard County and further. It's it's a very, very heavily traveled road. So there is and based on sheets business with like MTOs and having having food actually really close to 32, which is not something that is that we actually have right now. There are opportunities to consider. In terms of um, if you are driving through and you're in an electric vehicle, there's an opportunity here for for sheets to to be one of the only places against 32 that could provide that type of service. And so the timing, I think, Stuart, you bring up a good point. That timing actually does matter because people who want to run in, get some food, run back out, there's there is an argument to be made, and that that is for for sheets to look at the business practice of that is how much you want to, to have for electric vehicle owners to put a decent charge into their car versus little charge or medium charge. I, I'm not going to get into what level two, level three, et cetera mean, but I think that's the that that's what I hear in terms of a proposal, which is is a it's a it's a viable thing to consider just because the location here and where um and, and there are potential future impacts. Jason, that's a good point. And it's a point well made and it balances both of our opinions. But again, leave it up to sheets. Correct. I appreciate that that view, and I think you're right. It is. This is John Iber. It is a. It is an ever changing uh, industry that's going on out there right now. It's. It's. You know, and, and I think e even the technology that's used for EV charging stations, what we're using today, five years from today, it may be outdated. Who, who knows what we're going to be onto at that point? So you know, um, yes, we are good stewards of the environment. We are offering two right now. If we find out that we need to add two more, we we will. But you know, we 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 have to look at at the full offering, and we have to you know really we 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 have we've looked at this very closely. We've compared marketplaces. We feel two is a good number to start at right now. In two years from now, if if we have customers saying, "My gosh, you need more," we'll add two more. Well, what we want to be good stewards of the community, of the area, of 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 ourselves here. So. You know, I do believe Stuart, you know, thank you, Stuart. Um, I think that was well put. Um, I mean, Hopefully that's you'll be in the ground right in two now. years. Yes. Hopefully you'll be in the ground in two years. Pardon me? I said, hopefully you'll be in the ground <laughs> in two years. That's the hope. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but no, no, it's it's ever changing and we continually, our model continually adjusts to to what's going in the marketplace. Um, you know, um, 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 you can go back and look at at sheet stores from even five years ago to what they are today, and you wouldn't even know it was the same store. Basically, there's been it's an evolutionary marketplace right now, the fastest changing marketplace I've seen regarding this technology that I don't think anybody can keep up with it, unfortunately, at this point. And that's great, and that means it's all hands on deck right now. But we just, you know, we are here looking at this right now, and this is what we feel is great um for the for 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 the offering right now um and then you know several years from now if we need to add to or if the technology changes we'll we'll be right there looking at it too so thank you thanks everyone all right um so those were our three environmental proffers that we're offering i'm going to move on to the architectural proffers and i think this was colette's question regarding the activity spaces so we are providing two activity spaces um, at the property corners along Telegraph Road that are adjacent to the 10-foot hiker biker trail in public right away for use by the public. Um, I guess I'm going to go back to that plan so I can show where they are again. So this one um, in the left corner along Telegraph and Betson Avenue um, does have a seat wall area for someone to sit. Um, 
I'm going to get into what else will be in there in the next um, proffer. And then the one over here, um, sort of the same thing with the seat wall off of the hiker biker trail. So a place to congregate, relax, uh, take a break from walking and or biking. Um, those are the two locations. Um, I wanted to touch on the lighting as well, Collect, because I know that's one of your questions. So in addition to the on-site lighting, there's existing street lights along Telegraph Road that are not um, in that model that I shared. And the police station is directly across the street, just for everyone's knowledge. Um, but we could certainly look into how that light impacts the activity space and make, making sure that it's full, lit appropriately. All right, moving on to the streetscape and urban design proffers that we are offering. So we are providing space for a piece of artwork in the Southern activity space uh, along Telegraph and Betson Avenue, where it can be seen from the public sidewalk and also enjoyed while utilizing the activity space. Um, we're also providing an additional bike rack there. Um, I've mentioned this before, but just for someone to take a break or if they wanna go grab something from the sheets, they have a place to put their bike in the activity space area. And we are also um, planning to, um, we also thought the additional bike rack would tie in nicely with the DPW project. Um, if and when that trail is ever built um, would be a good addition to that as well and provide additional community benefits. Um, and we're also um, proposing to maintain the plantings and landscape areas along the property's immediate frontage on all four of the public roadways. I had, I had two questions for you on that one, Emily. So you say an additional bike rack. I apologize, I missed it. Can you um, say what the where the bike rack is that's not the additional one? Sure. So the first bike rack, it's tough to see on here, but is located right along the end. Uh, this is the main entrance of the sheets. So um, right here for someone to use if they came onto the site. And then the one that's um, additional that I just mentioned is down in this bottom left corner. Okay. Is there a pathway going from the hiker biker to the bike rack? Yes, there is. Um, this, may have, this may be a better plan to look at. So here's the hiker biker trail and there is the five foot pathway that leads up to the store. Okay. And the bike rack is right here. I'm not so sure about these activity spaces in the corner, if I could ask a question about those. I mean, if you were driven down um, Telegraph Road, you know, it's a busy road. Uh, I'm not sure anybody's going to sit there and read a novel while trucks and cars was by, you know, pretty much close to it. So do you really expect that to be used? I um, understand your thought and concern. We did think it would be a good addition, um, but are willing to consider different locations if um, that would suit the committee better. Do you have any? Yeah. I mean, just to jump in with Martin's concern, I'm also concerned that the other activity center, people that actually sit there, they're going to walk. They're not going to walk all the way down the sidewalk to that sidewalk. They're going to cross right where all of the cars are queuing up for the drive through. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm actually concerned that there is a safety hazard with that, unless there's like a barrier. And I'm not sure if there is a barrier. There's, there are a lot of landscape, there's a lot of landscaping, I guess, as one barrier, which I'm sharing that now. Um, there is no actual physical barrier. And I guess just to back up on the activity space. So we are providing the amount required for the master plan. It's about 10 square feet per 100 square feet of um, building area, um, roughly. So we need about 610 square feet and we're providing 730 square feet with these two spaces here. Um, understand the concern about how people are going to get from here to the sheets and um if, if i could take a minute yeah, and just talk sure. about a sheets drive through versus like a fast food restaurant with drive through it's it's a very different concept for a sheets drive through i mean um quick service restaurants fast food restaurants with drive throughs it is it is a true um um it, it almost it almost does more sales than customers coming into the restaurant to buy food. Um, you know, they're doing the double drive through lanes. They're doing two windows. They're putting people in the parking lot to, to move orders, move cars. It's like a racetrack. A sheets drive through is something that's totally a totally different experience than that. 
our drive throughs are, um, it's, it's, it's important and it really became important. And I don't want to speak towards COVID too much, but it really became important around COVID because of, of, of the issues that we had with, you know, social distancing for all that. But our drive through is not like a, a fast, a fast food restaurant with drive through. It's a single lane drive through. There's no speaker point. There's no speaker points that you're talking into. It's actually a kiosk that you type in your order. Um, the throughput is very, very low. Um, it's really set up for the, the parents with the children that may be um, coming home from school or coming home from a soccer event. Um, it's, a, it's a very, it's a lower throughput, uh, much lower throughput than you would see with an, a normal from, from a competing, you know, fast food restaurant with drive through. So, you know, the reason why I'm bringing that up is, um, yeah, they, I, I totally understand about the separation and the safety of people moving from the activity centers to the site. But there is a, a very big difference. I, I would offer that maybe there is a way like um, um, there is a, a, an entry door to our sheet store that faces towards Betson. I'm sure that there is some way that we could define a, a cross path across the drive through somehow connecting to that doorway at the back of the store to, 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 to really, you know, pronounce that there is a pedestrian crossing right there, too. So it's something that we could look towards more as, as we get further into the project here. So thank you. Sandy, did you have a question? No. Okay. All right. So moving into um, final part evaluation of the application. So first wanted to run through the consistency of the Odenton Center, Town Center master plan. So we went over a lot of the requirements. Um, I just wanted to highlight a few of the goals that we're meeting um, with this development. So goal number six, protecting the natural resources and environmentally sensitive areas in the town center. So the project and proffers provided support several go goals of the master plan. Um, the environmentally, uh, the natural resources will be protected by providing additional native plant species and green area above and beyond what is required by the master plan. Goal number seven, provide community spaces and public amenities throughout the town center. So um, we talked about the activity spaces um, and the public amenity that can be enjoyed by the residents and visitors. And then goal number eight, ensuring accessibility of the town center for those traveling on foot or by bike, car, bus, or train. So uh, the 10 foot hiker biker trail and extra bike rack at the activity space will ensure accessibility of the town center for those traveling by foot and bike. And the site provides vehicular access on three roads for customers uh, utilizing the convenience store and gas station for those traveling by car or bus. Um, moving into the second point of the, of the um, evaluation. So public access to uses and amenities. We are providing public sidewalks along all property frontages, uh, the sidewalks connect into the activity areas, allowing public access to the activity areas. And we just talked about a way to potentially improve that. Um, and the additional bike rack will provide public access to the pedestrians and bikers traveling into the town center. Um, going through the community benefits. So um, activity spaces can provide an area for community members to gather and enjoy the surrounding environmental features. Um, having community common areas is a goal of the Odenton Town Center and is a requirement as well. So that is why the activity spaces are proposed. Um, consistency with the capital program. So I did talk about the DPW feasibility study for the trail from Odenton to BWI. So our 10 foot hiker biker trail is consistent with that feasibility study. <clears throat> Compatibility and quality of design. The site was designed to be compatible with its use as a gas station providing proper circulation for vehicles that need to use the site. The proposed building um, and site layout are compatible with the industrial zoning and surrounding properties. Um, the site will be adequately landscaped to provide visual buffer from all four of the public streets. Um, we talked about pedestrian and vehicular access and circulation um, a few times already. And then we the environmental enhancement mitigation. So the landscaping about the 100% native plant species, the green area increase that we've talked about a few times, and then the EV parking as well. And to wrap up our presentation, um, we just would like to note the request that we have of the committee at this time. So we do the modification to bypass the preliminary plan and allow a direct submittal of the site development plan. Um, we are requesting approval of the bonus program request um, numbers one through five that I mentioned previously. 
and we are requesting approval of the committee to approve the Odenton Town Center submission package that was presented this evening in order to proceed through the county site development plan process. Um, I think that's all I have at this time. So opening up for any other questions or comments. Um, thank you. Okay, thanks Emily. So uh, we'll start with the committee members. Uh, and then after the committee members have asked their questions, we will go to um, the public to uh, to be able to, right, uh, yeah, to ask questions on this project. So uh, does anyone on the committee have questions, has, have further questions? Okay, Colette. Um, I have two additional questions. First, I'm curious about the trail and sidewalk um, and just changing it to a trail and what the county's plans are in general for Telegraph Road regarding bike ped or sidewalks, or if that's in line with any plans that the county currently has for telegraph. Um, so at this time, we are only aware of the DPW feasibility study that has the 10 foot area and the four foot planting area that I mentioned a few times. Um, I'm not aware of the county requiring any bike lanes. There aren't, there isn't currently a bike lane and there is not, um, I don't believe there's currently a sidewalk. So um, I can look into that, but I don't have an answer at this time. Yeah, okay, there's thanks. no connectivity. No one's going to use this. In fact, no one's going to ride on the, on the road. So they would need a- No, I'm just, I just want to make sure that the, the changes are in line with any plans that the county currently has for other areas of Telegraph. That we're not like planning a sidewalk and now we're taking it out in this little stretch. And so I don't know, Mark, if you can answer that. Yeah, no, I mean, Emily's right, is they've been in, in consultation with the um, Department of Public Works regarding that capital project. So, um, which is a great first step of developers understanding what capital projects are within the area and making sure that um, those projects are in line with each other. Okay, great, thank you. And then my second question has to do with future remediation on the site, if you all could potentially talk a little bit about um, what you're planning on site to make sure that there, that future remediation is not as difficult as it is on other sites where gas stations end up leaving and then nobody's able to come in and clean up the site enough with the soil contamination. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I don't know, and John, feel free to jump in um, if we've thought that far. Um, I'm not. I don't think Sheets is thinking about not having the site right now um, or leaving the site. So John, if you have any thoughts about that or, or we can look into and provide, provide a response at a later date. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer for that because I don't know of um, many Sheets sites that we leave. There may be an instance or two, but you know, I, I, I think our intent is to be here for the long term. Um, I just don't know. I will tell you that our, our underground fueling systems for today, it's a, I don't want to get into details, but if I could, um, there's we, we do take the added extra steps with our, our underground fueling systems, and the, the the tanks are a double double walled system, with there's an actual brine material in it that's got sensors in it to, to monitor active active if there was ever an active problem with the underground tanks, for when we're in in operations. But as far as the future, I I'm, unfortunately I wouldn't really know how to answer that right now. Unfortunately, I'm sure that there is a mechanism to manage that, but I just don't know because you know we're looking at this for a very long term to be here, um, and be a real good good neighbor in the marketplace. So. This is Stuart jumping in. I, I I think that their state law takes care of that to a certain degree. So um, when when a, a station is there and they want to close down the station, there's a process of closing it down and remediation through the state. So. Um, I think that that helps a little bit with your question. Yeah, Stuart, you're right about that. We do have to meet certain requirements on sites that were previously developed as gas stations. It's a good point. Right, and I'm I'm sure that if we were, I'm I'm going to just speculate here, but if we were moving, leaving the site, um, I'm sure that there's a way that we safely um, safely um, take take the fueling facility out of business, taking the tanks down, and you know, get a get up clean ticket. But I'm speculating right now because I really don't know at this point. I'm probably am taking a little bit out of turn without really knowing the facts around that. I apologize. So um, to the other gentlemen, I'm sure that there is regulatory requirements for doing that. So, and we we would we we would we would absolutely do that. I know we're retired to do that, but if we, that's what we would do. So thank you. 
Okay, thank you. All right, so Colette, I did look up the DPW's trail presentation for Odenton Telegraph Road, and I can say that what uh, I can confirm that what they're proposing matches the DPW proposed hiker biker trail for Telegraph Road. A 10 foot oh. shared use path and then a grass buffer that is four foot minimum, um, but it could be six foot or greater. Uh, depending on the site. So it, it, it does match. Thank you. Okay, Sandy, Thanks, Jason. Have that was great. questions. Um, I have one quick question. I uh, saw in the presentation um, the signage that's going to be used. Can you show me where that signage is going to be located? Sure. So the sign, the freestanding sign that I showed will be in this left corner along Telegraph and Betson. This dark gray rectangle here. Got it. Okay, thanks, Sandy. Uh, anyone else from the committee have questions? I got one question, I guess on Mayfield that's between the proposed project today and the project under construction, which I think is mini storage behind the bowling alley, who, and maybe Mark can answer, who's, who's taking care of Mayfield Road? Say, say that again, what do you mean, who's taking care of Mayfield? Hello. So I could speak to what, what we'll be doing with this. So we are providing the right of way and the pavement width on our side of Mayfield Road to meet the pavement width and right of way requirements, but only on the side, I guess, if you're looking at a plan left, um, which is the requirement for the Odenton Town Center. In terms of what's happening on the right side, I, I don't, Mark, I don't know if you can answer if they're widening yeah. right away. Yeah, so the Mayfield self storage does have approval to move forward to grading and building permits, and they would be responsible for their half section of the road as well. Does that answer your question, Stuart? Speechless. We may be having comms issues. Um, it sounded like he was cutting out right at the end there. So, okay. Uh, any other questions? I'm sorry, oh, I got out there. Um, Sounds the breaking up for me. <laughs> I apologize for that. But I, I guess um, self storage, are they improved? Thank you. Okay, sorry, Stuart, you, you, you're dropping in and out. You want to try again? No, it's okay. I'm in the car. I'm near the airport. It's going in and out. So I don't, I don't want to. I was just trying to find out if Mayfield Road is being improved to the center by both um, both developers. Okay, that might be something we have to uh, take a look back. I'll, I'll do a quick read of the letter that we sent to the county about the Mayfield Road self-storage facility. I don't see anything about the road itself in our letter. I'll look, Jason, I'll look back into some of the um, meeting materials that I've provided you all and confirm. Okay. Perfect. Okay, any other questions from committee members? Okay, hearing none, I do have a few comments uh, myself then. Um, number one, I wanted to actually uh, congratulate you on a good presentation. Like this is this is actually one of the most detailed packages uh, for a gas station that I have I have seen in my entire time with OTCAC. So uh, either you you uh, you hired a a very good thorough engineering um, an engineer uh, that to work this, which is which is excellent. Or you you did your homework and then um, said, well, the committee team tends to focus on these things, so we're gonna we're gonna give them lots of info here. Or both, or something else. But I just want to say, good job. This is a this is actually a really good and complete package. Thank you. Uh, so a lovely detail I haven't seen. Thank you. Uh, so I did have um, uh, other other questions. I'm just gonna. I don't want to to repeat. So there was. So one question I did have is: Is there a plan to provide help to drivers who enter the Sheets facility? So for example, Mayfield, 
you can't actually return to uh, the, let me think, the, um, the northbound, the right side lanes from a Mayfield exit. You also can't enter there. So for example, if I'm leaving Sheets and I didn't know that, I'm going to basically have to circle and turn around. So were you going to provide any type of directionality for drivers to know you need to exit through through Betson to get to the light or or so forth for to go north or south? Sure. Um, go ahead, John. That's a very good question. And yes, we can absolutely provide directional signage to make sure the customers are entering and exiting properly for however they are going to leave the site and, um, you know, I guess head up Benson Road, head down Benson Road, or get out Telegraph Road to 32. There's absolutely on site directional signs that we can provide. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. I think that will help with some flow. Um, another question I had is, and I'm just kind of uh, confused about the numbers, is earlier in the presentation, you said that there were 56 spaces being like required, mm -hmm. but your diagram said 62 spaces were required. So I just wanted to understand what the yeah, so this one says 56. There's an earlier yeah. diagram that said 62. And I just I just wanted to get an understanding of what the what what's the actual required number. Yeah, so the correct number is 56. Um, I think the diagram has the incorrect number, and that does include um, the requirement for the county regulations for the seating, um, indoor and outdoor. So the 56 is the correct number. Okay, great. Thank you. And then um, there were two. Uh, all right, so that the loading zone that's at the north end, uh, can you describe what that is, what the utility, what the use of that is? Sure, uh, right here? Mm -hmm. Exactly, okay. yes. Yep. So that's for um, the fuel tanker trucks to unload um, the fuel into the um, underground uh, tanks. That's what that's for. Okay, okay, so your expectation then is, um, how, how do you anticipate a tanker truck to actually reach your site? Uh, is, are, is it to come up Betson and then enter through the Betson Avenue? And then is Urban Street big enough for them to turn back to go back to that traffic light? Or May, is Mayfield big enough? Are the intersections big enough for a tanker truck to actually navigate through here safely? Yeah, so she has um, standard um, ways that they go through a site um, clockwise and counterclockwise for a tanker and the um, deliveries as well. And we've run both of those trucks um, through the site um, and may, we're able to make them work and leave room for fueling um, based on our, we use um, auto turn. So we did run both of those with that um, application and both of them do work with without clipping anything or any cars that would be sitting there, anything like that. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Cause um, uh, one of the, one of the comments we got from the, from a, a, a local resident is that urban street is narrow. And so mm -hmm. that, that, would be a concern. We want to make sure that uh, that we're not creating a traffic hazard. Right. Understood. Okay. So that was those are all the comments I had. Um, other than just the that I did. I want to echo Colette's concern about the lighting, uh, sure, specifically sure. for the activity spaces, because um, even though you're across the street from the the police station, I know that area of Telegraph Road isn't exactly um, the most well lit in the right areas. So uh, we don't want people to just be hanging around in the dark. Uh, sure especially. Yep, we can certainly um, take into consideration the existing lights and model that, um, make sure we're providing adequate lighting. Okay, thank you. And then um, uh, we'll bounce over to uh, the public comments. And so there are there are two here in the chat and I'll just read them because um, I already did the first one about Urban Street. And then the, so the second one is, uh, this is the first location in the area and a, a simple search on Google actually does confirm that this is that this there there are no sheets close to central like central western Maryland so I concur with that. Um, what made you choose Anne Arundel County uh, since basically this is the first in the central area? Yes, um, so I, I I I would offer I'm speaking for one of my team members here, but we are we are looking at other sites in the central Maryland area. Um, we're actively working a couple of sites right now, a couple of other sites in Anne Arundel County. And this, this is just one of several that we're looking to enter into the marketplace in Anne Arundel County right now. This one, we're actively working on a site in, in uh, Linthicum Heights. We're actively working on a site uh, in Hanover, Maryland right now too. So there are several locations that we're looking at in Anne Arundel, in Anne Arundel County and surrounding counties too. And this, this was definitely a targeted site that we identified early on as far as our entry into the marketplace. Okay, great, thank you. And You're then, will, will the landscaping group, uh, will the landscaping be up to date on proper mulching, which is not to create mulch volcanoes, 
uh, to avoid damaging uh, plants, trees and plants? Yes, we, we control all that in-house. Um, one unique thing about Sheets is that we do have a large internal what I'll call facilities department, and they are constantly on the marketplace, you know, making sure our stores, our sites are clean, proper, all four seasons. So yes, they're there. We, we mow and we tend to take the extra step if we have to go out into the right of way and do some mowing to make it look, our site is our site. If there's a right of way and it's overgrown, we'll go out there and do it. So it's something that we take pride in doing it. And it's not just during springtime and fall, it's throughout the whole whole growing season that our, our, our facilities people out running through the marketplace, taking care of, you know, uh, making sure the site looks clean, proper and trimmed up and making sure the in interior, in, in, interior of the building is the same too. So yes. Okay, great, thank you. So uh, those are all the, um, okay, so, all right. So one more question just popped up. Um, are you going to widen uh, urban street at all on uh, your side of urban street to accommodate any traffic not being able to get to north brown telegraph road will cause cars to use urban street to get to betson yes so we are widening urban street um we are providing um the parallel parking spaces that are required for the um Odenton town center master plan um and i think it already has the right of way that it needs sorry yeah, so we are providing, um, we are widening it to meet the, uh, on our side of the, of the um, site in order to meet the minimum payment with by the master plan. Okay. Great, thank you. So uh, if there are other questions that the public has, you can type them in and post them and we'll read them. Or um, uh, I think if you, if you uh, raise your hand, I think Mark has the ability to also um, allow you to ask your question. So does anyone in the public have a, a question? Okay, Mark, uh, we have Jerry has his hand up. Promoting him as a panelist here. And you'll need to unmute yourself, Jerry. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so in this question, um, I actually have uh, frequented your sheets locations in Frederick Mellon, especially when you have three of them along 85, which is quite amazing. And I was um, curious, I was want to ask the central Maryland question because in addition to that, I understand you're well aware of the clientele difference that is in central Maryland versus the more remote areas you are from further out. And that that might change your demand for what fueling options you give in terms of those customers. I'm guessing that maybe you can consider this as a more of a suggestion than a question whether to consider that um, this area tends to have a higher rate of EV adopt adaptation than the ones that are further out. But in turn, as yeah, I did um, understand and I'm well aware of what you said about the changing market and that may, may change your in and influence what you decide. So what I found out as a, that many people are doing in this area is that they are laying just the infrastructure down for a faster charger due to EVs going towards more larger and larger batteries. And in this area, it might be a great location for, in essence, a pilot to see what will happen if that does come in the future, if you already have laid down a wiring ahead of time. It's not to add a transformer, inverter, or anything, just to lay down the actual underground work beforehand so that you have the option if you want to attempt to do any type of pilot program in the central Maryland area due to the higher EV adoption we have in this place. <clears throat> So, I mean, we'll take that into consideration. Thank you. Yes, that's all I had. Okay, thank you, Jerry. All right. Um, uh, anyone else from the public have any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the committee. So um, in terms of uh, discussion for uh, the committee and and our thoughts. So I've I've been recording everybody's statements and thoughts to to bring it together. So just comments the committee had through the discussion was that uh, Martin brought up about solar panels. Colette brought up activity space lighting, uh, as well as we'd like to see at least one fast charger. Uh, I had mentioned uh, that the proximity to Route 32 creates a unique opportunity here um, uh, to fill a gap and 
uh, as well as safety hazard, the potential safety hazards for people walking for activity spaces, recommend clear crossings to connect activity spaces to the building. Uh, and then there were the for five requests with um, that were made as well as then uh, multiple proffers. So does anyone have any any thoughts or comments on the uh, what we've heard so far? I'll just say, Jason, from my point of view, there were a lot of exceptions taken to the master plan in terms of the requirements here. Um, I think they tried to offset that with the proffers. In my view, they didn't do a good job. So um, I just worry about um, us approving a plan like this in a site where it doesn't really fit. Uh, it may be the location that people want to have a gas station there, but the site all the exceptions that you are taking to the master plan, the setbacks and distances and all that are not being met. So I, that's just my view. Okay, any other comments? This is Stuart and I think they did a great job in presenting this and doing the best they can with the site. One of the issues is this is a great project that just shows the inconsistencies of the town center plan with the county's plan and some of the stuff requiring a 10 foot hiker biker trail and then a five foot sidewalk is ridiculous. It's ridiculous from a fiscal standpoint. It's ridiculous from an environmental standpoint. And, you know, some of the things that they're asking for are very realistic. Um, it's an industrial area. So a gas station does go there. It's right off the highway. So it is a good location for a gas station. So, um, I, I, I have to go in a minute, but, um, you know, when the vote comes, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with what they've done along with the comments that the committee members made for consideration. Um, and I also appreciate the public's comments because I thought there were really some really good comments. So, um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Stuart. All right. Any other comments from the committee? Okay, so just to summarize then where we are is, uh, so there are five, re five requests. Uh, interestingly, there are, I, I think to highlight Stuart's point, it's, 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 it's well taken in that um, it is this site with four public roads, the plan does, was not written to really account for that type, this, this type of site for, for certain locations. So if you think about the setback location, uh, setback modifications for the minimums that are required, it would be, challenging at best to even put any building uh, on a lot with four public roads surrounding it and maintain all those setbacks appropriately and have it actually be a functional building. So I think there's, uh, it's, it's, uh, this presentation was good at exposing that as well as the impossibility to meet certain aspects of the plan if other parts of the plan are followed. So, so it does, uh, it does, um, Martin, your point is, is taken that there are, there are a lot of requests here. Um, and it, and the committee needs to think about that in terms of, of, the spirit of the plan as well. So uh, the request they, that the developer has for us is to, uh, to have um, uh, a letter in terms of the, the different asks that they have. So does anybody have any thoughts or feedback on comments on what, uh, what the committee should do here? Well, Jason, regardless of the decision or the other content of the letter, I think we should still encourage uh, developers to look at the energy situation that we're facing in this country, in this state, and elsewhere, and to not utilize a perfect spot for solar panels, in my view, is, is short-sighted. And I don't think the technology question is the issue. You know, you can wait around forever for the technology to catch up or to change and never get anything done. So I'm still a strong advocate for all these proposals that come in to really look at solar energy use, on, especially on areas like the canopy, which are perfect for that. Okay. Martin, so, does your home have solar energy? You have solar I don't have the right home? orientation on my roof, Stuart. And again, that's a similar situation. They sometimes don't have the right orientation, oh, no, the technology. In this case. No, it's perfect in this oh, that, case. That, 
that's your point of view. That's not an expert point of view. That's perfect. Uh, that's that's your point of view. It's not no, an expert's not point of view. On the amount of, on the amount of, on just on just on the amount of panels that you might need and what it yeah. utilizes for. I, I I think right now, and I'm not, look, I, I understand what you're saying. I really do, Martin. I think right now it's more important that the LED lighting and stuff like that has probably saved more energy than than what you're going to get out of a few you, solar panels. You got to do so, everything. You got to do everything, Stuart. You got to do everything. Yeah, I, it, it takes time. It takes time for it to be budgeted in. And, and, and there is, yeah, there is an issue there. Don't agree with that. There is. All right. So, so it's okay, well, on, though. Okay. I appreciate your opinion. I really do. Well, you're so, so to move on. I think it's so what the so Martin, you're what what I think a, a a compromise on this in terms of inclusion of language would be it does make sense because the committee has done this in the past to always encourage developers to look at the most energy efficient solutions possible in terms of their construction for what makes sense to to try and decrease um or just to be energy efficient. Uh based uh, that that's something the committee has like we've discussed and and put in, and that's that. It's an encouragement um, to to just consider all options. Okay, so in terms of a letter, um, is there a, uh, a motion to to provide a recommendation in favor of the the proposal and um, and including all of the comments that the committee had about uh, about the site, about the requests, and um, uh, and acknowledging that. Basically, the 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 challenges that this site has with the master plan is that a motion someone would make. I'm sorry, Jason. Does that include, does that include recommend like a recommendation for all of the changes that they're asking for? So all of the individual approvals and yes, so the modification of the bonus program. Is yes, that, you would roll it all into one. Yeah, yeah. That's so. Basically, that's, I'm starting at the at. Do we do we um, do we want to issue a recommendation that says yes, we're we're in favor of it all, or do we want to go line by line through the individual requests? I would personally say line by line okay. just to double check. Okay. Would you like me to share again, or do you have it have it written down? Uh, I have it written down, but um, if I get it wrong, please correct me. So. Um, all right, so the first request is the 10 foot wide hiker biker trail in lieu of the 10 foot hiker biker trail plus five foot sidewalk. Just a quick question before we do the line to line. Is it basically we're at the point where this is for sure approved as a development that will happen no matter what then? So I then think the, it's important to note that we don't approve anything. Correct. We are making it's just recommendations. The recommendation. Right. We're not okay. we're, we're nobody's. Yeah, and this is the very beginning of the process. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Right. So the so basically we're at the very they're at the very beginning of the process that there's there's a lot of work I'm sure they they have to do. So the so basically the first request it was the 10 foot wide hiker biker trail only in lieu of the hiker biker trail plus sidewalk. Okay, Jason, I make a recommendation that we um, accept the uh, proposal in request one concerning the setback of the hiker biker trail. Okay. All right, so the letter will include, like the proposal is the letter includes a, um, uh, that we approve that, that approved this request. Does anyone have any, uh, is there a second to that inclusion? Uh, Jason, Andrew, all right. Jason, uh, just mm -hmm. before you vote on that, maybe look at where you have exceptions, um, because you, I mean, you can go through, I guess, and approve them one by one, or just look at the ones that you don't. But maybe Sandy's got the right idea. Just go through each one and just take a vote. Right. Okay. So, is there objection to us approve it? So. To having in the letter a request for the approving the request for the telegraph road modification. Okay. Hearing none, then uh, the letter will the letter will include the that uh, the committee approves request one. All right. So request 
Uh, and, and basically, we're, again, when I say approved, we are not approving. We're not an approving body. We are recommending the approval. So if I'm shorthanding it, that's what that means, just for clarification for everybody. Okay. Request number two is the is modifications to the maximum building setbacks. And so this is to request a modification for Urban, Mayfield, and Betson to allow the building to be greater than the maximum building setbacks. This is where we get into the problem, right? I mean, are we following the plan or are we not? Yeah, I was, I was gonna say like, I, I don't think I approve that. So I don't know how you would have a building that can meet these setbacks, I'll be honest. That's that's my concern is I I just, based upon this this entire design, like I, I just don't see how there'd be any feasible uh, feasible project that could meet all four setbacks. If I understood it correctly, you'd have to fill the whole space with the building and then you'd have no room for anything else. Correct. Or you, you ring the perimeter of the site with building and uh, locate your parking towards the middle of the site. The question is, you know, if we if we say this is fine, we take no exception to it. Um, is it because if we took exception, they couldn't do the project? So what what's important the the, the plan following what the plan says, or encouraging a project to go forward, regardless of the plan? So I hear what you're saying, Jason, you wouldn't be able to, to build it. What's most important here, getting the building built or following the plan? Right, well, I'm, I'm not just referring to this project. I just looking at the setbacks, I'm, I'm not convinced there'd be much of any project that could actually be built on this site without some type of exception to the plan on this one. Could I ask Emily a question? On this building design, is this a standard design that you use in multiple locations? Um, so I'll answer that, Emily, if you don't. Yeah. yeah. Um, building footprint wise, yes, but we are we are enhancing the robustness of the exterior facades. We've we've added some um, um, added fenestration window treatments on the facade that faces Telegraph Road. Um, so there are enhancements that we we look at on site specific basis. But if you went inside the building, I mean, operationally, you would say this is you know how how our building flows. But the outside, we've adapted it to to better meet the conditions of the site. So thank you. Is this site um, developable? Can you actually develop this site? If, if you stick with the, the plan, can you develop here? Jason, maybe to your point. Uh, maybe like what's the land use designation for this area? It's the industrial sub area or the industrial zoning district. Um, but again, given sort of looking at the different markets within Odenton, like Jason had pointed out that this is right off of the Route 32 um, ramps. It's next to the industrial district. There's warehouses across the street, uh, or sorry, across Maryland 170. Um, we don't expect or anticipate the type of mixed use development that you would get around the train station or in the core area. Um, so just to make that distinction and you know, that's not to say that you would you wouldn't get in a nice mixed use development, but again, we're really anticipating that to happen around the train station. So so Mark, for this area, would would it be common then to to make exceptions because of the area it's in? So other projects, other lots that would be developed would also fall into that. So setbacks that wouldn't apply in this zone area 
So for, so for example, take the uh, Mayfield self storage across the street. Um, they, their building is situated um, to the corner of Maryland 170 and Mayfield. So clearly they are not meeting the setback requirement for Locust Road, right? Which is on the other side of the property. Um, I could take a measurement if you like, but they, they're essentially having that outdoor storage, rec recreational vehicle or boat parking storage um, between Locust Road and the building itself, like I said, situated at Mayfield and, and Telegraph. So again, you can, I shouldn't say you, but the county can certainly take the position of not granting any modifications to setbacks uh, or, or projects that are going through the bonus program and um, offering proffers. But then again is, yeah, what is the feasibility of development that we have 100% strict adherence to the master plan? Do we actually see that happening on some of these properties? And it's because there is sometimes consolidation of these lots um, that prohibit that from actually happening. So, well, if you're saying that based on what's in the master plan and what the area is zoned for, it can't feasibly happen without making concessions, then I that seems to me like it shouldn't be zoned for industrial use if you would have to break all these other things to allow it to happen. But I think that's where the flexibility in the plan comes into play is because while it's ideal to have some of these, um, uh, you know, a vision for, for this area, the reality is it is the industrial area around, the, around this um, property. Um, there's outdoor storage and, and other industrial types of uses. And, and again, is with this new master plan, um, the draft, we're, we're just not anticipating, um, like I said, buildings that can front on the perimeter of, of all four streets in, in these block type of situations. As well, Mark, I think it's important to note that the um, in the current master plan, the 2016 plan, the industrial section actually is the most flexible mm -hmm. of all the zones. Like industrial actually is that you can do the most in that zone with, I mean, there's a few things you can't build that you could build in other zones, but, but for the most part, like just looking at it, I, as, as what Don said, I, I don't know how you would really get a, even any of these uses like to work because of how the, the constraints of the site itself. And that's, that's the question I have. And, and that's the purpose of the bonus program is understanding that projects rarely fit um, the county code requirements, the master plan requirements to a T. And so we do have these opportunities for applicants to request relief to those requirements. Um, and in, in return, because it's, they're seeking relief from a requirement or from essentially the vision that, we're, that we've set out, the return is the proffer that provides some type of community benefit that is is somewhat comparable to that relief that re they're requesting, if that makes sense. Yeah, so our job here is to say, given what they want to depart from in the plan is made up by the proffers that they're offering. So that's the trade-off that we're making here. And the fact that in this area, we have more flexibility to deviate from the master plan because it's in an industrial area. Um, and it sounds like the goal, when you think about the future of Odenton in this area, is wanting it to continue as an industrial that's, area. Of... That's a good question, right? <laughs> that's, the, that's the zoning district, so yes. Yeah. OK. Based upon the surrounding businesses that are there, it, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball by any means, but I, I doubt it's going to be changing anytime in the near future because they're, 
it, it, the businesses that are there are there for a reason like they're so yeah and I, I don't see that changing so it goes back to the question of do we um uh I need a, a stance for the committee on the maximum building setback modification request could we say we're We've noted the deviation um, and take no position on it. The committee can choose to take no position on this request. Um, I oh, the line uh, item we're talking about. Yeah. yeah, it's this is request number two. I think um, it we it, for it instead of saying it was a clear yes or no, potentially say like like split. Here were thoughts that the committee had. Are we not able to do that? We can. I would say that uh, in that case, it would be the committee notes that this site is a challenge to build, uh, to to have development because of being bounded by four public roads, and and and, uh, and acknowledges that the setbacks are a challenge for this site, um, but uh, but did not take a stance on if if it felt that. Um, the modifications of the plan were warranted or not. Yeah. We, the committee could do that. Yeah. So is there a motion for that? I would so move. Okay, is there a second? Me. <laughs> okay, so Mar uh, Mar uh, Martin and Abigail. Um, uh, in this one, I'm actually gonna call for a vote because um, I'm curious. So all in favor of of uh, not taking a stance and splitting the difference by saying that we acknowledge there are challenges and um, uh, but the committee declines to take a stance. So all in favor of that motion. You can raise your hand or let me, um, do there was a up. floating thumbs up. <laughs> but I don't know who put it. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So, so we have to yeah. move forward to vote from the OTCAC members. So I see Martin's up, and I'll vote for that as well. <laughs> I apologize. I, I didn't quite catch what we were voting. Uh, for the committee to take no stance on request number two, but just note that the site has challenges, but we decline to take a stance. Okay, so um, we have Martin and Abigail um, in favor. Anyone else in favor? Okay, um, all opposed. I believe we should say recommend it be approved. Okay, so Don is opposed. Um, I'll oppose as well. Okay. okay, motion fails. Okay, so uh, Don, you had another motion. No, well, you just said it. I need you to say it again. No, I I was just saying that the the no to your previous one. Oh, oh okay. So there. Okay, so is there a motion for the committee to approve oh. uh, to recommend approval of the setbacks? Based. I recommend we um, will we recommend approval. Okay, so the motion is to recommend approval based upon the challenges. Is there a second? Okay, Sandy. All right, all in favor of the of recommending approval, um, I would like to amend that by acknowledging that the, the site has challenges uh, in that statement. So recommending approval, acknowledging the challenges. Uh, all in favor of that motion. All right. Okay. So all opposed? Okay. The motion carries. So the committee will recommend- Who is opposed to that? Because I only uh, saw five. I didn't see anybody four. raise for opposition. Is uh, Martin or Abigail, are you abstaining or are you opposing? Yeah, I was trying to look for the hand, but yeah. I was too, actually. Okay, so both <laughs> right. are opposed. Yeah, so if, if, you're on, if you're not on camera, it's difficult to- to tell. Um, so you'll have to use one of the reactions um, or get turn yourself off mute. 
Okay, so what I recorded was I have uh, Martin, Abigail in opposition, and then I have Andrew, Colette, Don, myself, and Sandy in uh, favor of approval. Okay, acknowledging challenges. All right, so third, we have the two um, request to provide surface parking between the building and Urban Mayfield and Betson. So um, uh, this is to, uh, there's no parking between Telegraph and the building, but there would be parking between the streets and the other, uh, and the building. Okay, so request number three. Do I have a motion for one way or the other on this one? Can you just say the statement one more time? Sure. It's the so the request is the is the placement of uh, it's to request to place surface parking lots between the building and Urban Street, Mayfield Street, and Betson Avenue. Because right I now move, the plan does not permit that. I move we recommend approval. Okay. Is there a second for that motion from Don? A second. Okay, Andrew. Thank you. All right. All in favor of request number three to uh, recommend approval of uh, the surface parking lots. Approve. Okay, Abigail said approve as well. All right, all opposed to the motion. Okay, Martin. Okay. Okay, so I record just for the minutes on that. I record um, Abigail, Andrew, Colette, Don, uh, Sandy, and myself in approval. Martin in opposition. All right. Uh, just a quick question again um, for the surface parking lot. Was it adding more spaces that was than what was already there? Uh, my record from the discussion and Emily, correct me if I'm wrong. It's it's for you to meet the parking requirements. You have to have those lots. Yeah, correct. And the the plan does not. The plan asks that you don't put parking lots between the building and the public road, which is um, very hard because we're bordered by four public roads. So that is what we're requesting um, relief from. Okay. So. Actually, that's it's a good thing to note that this highlights a contradiction in the uh, with the site and the plan. All right. So the next request, request number four, is the twenty-five foot. Uh, it's the require the requirements of twenty foot twenty-five foot landscaping setback. Plantings along Telegraph Road. Uh, the request is for 11 feet instead of 25 feet and to provide a reduced number of plant units, uh, as well as they are unable to meet the 45 foot setback if the 25 foot setback is required. So this also highlights a contradiction with the plan itself in that one requirement can't be met, which is setback if landscaping buffer is maintained. Yeah, just to clarify, the landscaping buffer is off the Anne Arundel County Landscape Manual, just to make sure we note that. Um, it's not, that bu buffer is not in the master plan, but we do have to meet it for Anne Arundel County Landscape. Okay, so Mark, that's a good, that's a question now. So if that's Anne Arundel Landscaping Manual, does that not fall under the OTCMP then? Correct, yeah, that's, okay. that's a reference through the code. Okay, so this one is actually not up for discussion by the committee then, because it's not within our purview. Correct. Our development division is is just asking that that you do provide um, some type of response. So that can be no response because it's not the purview of the OTCMP. Okay. Okay. So I would push it. I would pose it back to the committee then. So this this is not a master plan waiver request. And the question is, do we want to provide any thoughts to the development division, um, or do we want to say this is not in the committee's purview? So the committee did not take a stance. A question, Jason, before you get to your question. Um, reduced number of plantings. What is a planting? Is it a shrub? Is it a tree? I couldn't tell from the presentation what all that vegetation was. How high is the shrub? 
How okay. big is the tree? How many trees? Any trees? Yeah, I'll let Eric in our office take this one. He's a registered landscape architect. So, so the reduction in plantings is, is an Anne Arundel County planting unit, and and a planting unit is a is a basket of of, of items. So, one planting unit is is one shade tree and three shrubs, two ornamental trees and five shrubs, or three individual evergreen trees. Um, you you saw the space that was available, and really you, you couldn't fit more in there without it it basically crowding each other out and 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 dying. Um, hence, hence the request. So I do want to clarify that that when there is a conflict between the landscape manual and the master plan, the master plan does supersede. And is is Emily? Is that what you have provided here in your presentation and plan? So. Uh, I guess the 25 foot landscape buffer is the county requirement and we're only providing 11. There is no um, specific requirement that I'm aware of in the code about planting units. And I'm sorry, in the, in the plan about planting units. I did confirm this with um, OPC as well that okay. um, because of where we are in the industrial sub-district, we need to follow mm -hmm. the general county landscape manual. Okay. So, Eric, if I may ask you, you, you said a combination of shrubs, evergreens, trees. So, what is it for this site? So, um, well, it, it's it's a reduction in planting units, which would be uh, you know a combination of those baskets. Um, generally, what we try to do is do the shade trees with understory plantings of shrubs, uh, especially along. Uh, where you want some some sort of visibility, but in, in this case we have uh, ornamental trees uh, along. Um, uh, yeah, let me open up the plan here. But uh, or, ornamental trees right along the street, um, and then uh, shade trees with understory uh, plantings of of shrubs um, back behind behind the multimodal trail. Um, okay, so those will be able to prosper in that 11 foot section of ground you got there. Yeah, we, we feel that we, we plan it as many as we could um, comfortably place that'll, that'll grow decently well over time um, mm -hmm. and, and to, to add more to the mix. Uh, and if you, Emily, I don't know if we could share, share that, that landscape plan or share the, um, uh, the rendering. Sure. The, the, these, these trees, these trees are shown um, really about you know about a 15 year lifespan um, to that size. So you can imagine you know if, if, the, if the plan you know these trees continue to grow over the course of the next 50 years, uh, a no, number of them are going to have to be removed. But we feel comfortable that in the next 15 to 20 years, uh, the trees that we're proposing will thrive. Um, after that, they'll still need need to be some sort of uh, maintenance or, or clearing of the of the trees in, in my opinion. So Eric, those those circles there are actually trees. They're all trees. Yeah, yeah, the large, large circles, Martin, are, are shade trees. Mm -hmm. uh, the smaller circles out in front are, are ornamental trees. And okay. then and the, the very small kind of um it's Got a it. hedgerow of shrubs um on both sides of the multimodal trail. Okay. Uh, basically all the all the all the property is filled up with uh, trees or shrubs. Okay, great. Thank you. That's good. You're welcome. All right, Jason. Okay. So back to the question of um, the does the committee want to take a stance or do we want to say because it doesn't this is not um, and it's 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 not an impact of the OTCMP. The committee doesn't take a stance because it's it. It doesn't come up as a question for a waiver on the master plan. So those are our choices. We either uh, uh, recommend the county approve, recommend the county not approve, or we we decline saying it's outside of our purview. It sounds to me, Jason, in this case, that what Eric was talking about does improve that site in terms of the number of trees that are planted and shrubs and so on. So overall, it's probably a benefit to the site. Okay. So Martin, does that? You mean you want to make a motion? Yeah, so move to accept it. Accept it. Okay, so a motion is to to approve request number four. 
Is there a second? I second. Okay, Abigail. All right, all in favor of approval of, of request number four uh, as proposed. Me as well. Okay, so I'm record, I record approve as uh, Jason, Sandy, Andrew, Abigail, uh, Martin, Don, all opposed? Collect. Okay. I believe that's kind of for everybody. Okay. And then the last, uh, the last request is to remove two specimen trees. And so, uh, again, my question would be is, is this a waiver of the landscaping manual or of the OTCMP? Emily? Yeah, this is um, a requirement in the Anne Arundel County zoning regulations. Um, so okay. if not approved, I guess, uh, by the OTC would need to be a modification request that we would submit to OPC for approval. Okay, so Mark, you tell us, what does that mean? Does that mean that this actually falls under the committee's purview or not? It does not. Okay. All right, and is, does the county want the committee to weigh in on this, or is this something that is that's outside and the county does not want input on this? Yeah, provide a recommendation. Provide one. Yes. Okay. All right. So just like the last one, this is not within the committee's purview, but we can vote to approve, uh, to recommend not approving, or to um, take no stance because it's not within our, within our purview. Just a comment, Jason. Um... We've seen this many times where we are losing these specimen trees. And I know based on the discussion that if we vote against it, then you know, the site really can't go forward. But I just wanna make the point that, you know, we are losing a lot of these trees. We lost a lot when they put the uh, new housing development over by the train station. Other areas are gonna be losing more specimen trees. So, it's really unfortunate that um, this is happening. So, but I realize that maybe that's, you know, we have to take these trees down uh, to make the site work. But I'm, I'm not happy about it, I'll tell you. I agree with Martin on the lens of, if we're saying we're gonna take very minimal efforts to think about sustainability and continue on a basically fossil fuel lens of building gas station, right. um, then there has to be some level of environmental considerations in a project that we're doing. If have trees at least to mitigate heat island in a whole industrial area, um, if we're going to continue. And we just, I'm not seeing where we're considering a climate or sustainability lens at all, if we're going to even think about like removing the little trees or shrubbery um, that there is. Yep. Yep. Okay. So the, so I, I can put language in the letter to indicate that the, the committee always uh, like, maintains concerns about the removal of specimen trees across all development projects uh, and that encourages the, the county to 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 ensure that these these uh, important plants are are preserved to the maximum extent possible I think that would I, that kind of echoes what you're saying I would go a little even high higher level to say like if we are considering or maintaining industrial or how we can consider and maintain industrial zoning in areas to figure out how we maintain a sense of climate resiliency or sustainability in that zoning. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I agree with Martin and Abigail on that. Okay, so what do we want to do in terms of either approve, not uh, not recommend approval, or take no stance on the specimen trees? I can add language about the uh, ensuring climate resiliency is maintained in, in all zoning districts and think about that as a uh, at the county level, um, but that we need to have an address as well for the, the specific request. I personally would not take a stance on this one. 
Okay, okay. Is that a motion? Sure. sure. Okay. I'll make a motion. We don't take a stance, but include the language we just talked about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay. Abigail seconds a motion of taking no stance on this request. All in favor of taking no stance on request number five. One, two, three. Uh, Abigail? Yeah, I'm there too. <laughs> okay. All right. So that one is everyone. Okay. All right. So we have reviewed all of the requests and um, now it comes back to the, the core issue of I need to know uh, the committee's overall stance on the project. So we went through the individual requests and I can I will list those off. Do we recommend approval of this project? Can I, aren't we supposed to also talk about the preliminary plan? Oh, yeah, that's okay. that oh, yeah. Piece. there was a modification to combine the two processes, correct? Oh, yes. Yep. Sorry, I missed that one in my list. Uh, but that one, uh, Mark, previously the committee yeah. has weighed in on that and been told that that's not actually within the purview of the committee. Same, same idea, just provide okay. a recommendation um, for no recommendation, if you'd like, right? Okay. So this is for, position. Yeah. for everyone's uh, knowledge on this one, this is this is something we went back and forth on, I think, uh, uh, over a year ago now, in terms of this actually is not, this, this one is not within the purview of the committee at all. And the committee actually did recommend uh, not approving this at one point and was very kindly told that this is not within the purview of the committee. <laughs> so, um, so I would, uh, I would leave it up to the committee how we want to respond to this. Yeah, so um, this question came up and uh, our former planning and zoning officer had provided a letter that, uh, in regards to the position the committee took it uh, for a 7-Eleven that was previously proposed at the Sappington Station Circle. And, and it's a good letter because he lays out the different code sections explaining why the county, um, especially in town centers, will grant modifications to combine the two processes. Um, so for the benefit of the committee, tomorrow I'll send that letter around for, for new folks um, for your benefit, because I think it does do a good job of explaining uh, the purpose of that and what each phase of the process accomplishes, so. No, that'd be great. Thank you, Mark, because yeah. um, it, it was a good letter and it, it helped. It, it actually, this is the, that letter is what drove my questions that I asked for all these. Is it in the purview of the OTCMP? Because um, that's that is one scoping it, scoping item that we can use. So, does anybody have a uh, a motion on this one, on this request? Jason, it seems maybe since it it doesn't matter, but yet they want us to respond, that we just wouldn't take a position. Or is that? I'll, I'll move. We don't take a position. Okay. Then we won't get yelled at. <laughs> well, unless we unless there's a real reason why we wouldn't want to approve this, and I don't know enough about this process to say if it's. If that's it's that's I think what Mark was highlighting is there are very specific right. things in the code that the county has to look at for why they would not approve this, this specific request. So in, the two processes can, com, can be combined in these town, in town centers and I think in a couple other situations um, because of the existing abundance of impervious surface. I'm just, I've got the letter up here reading parts of it here. Um, existing abundance of impervious surfaces on these sites renders the billable area determination purpose of the preliminary plan unnecessary because one of the purposes is to uh, look at storm water. So that can be accomplished during these later phases um, of development review. So when it when an applicant submits a project, then it requires um, county staff resources to review these plans one again for efficiency sake on both the county and the developer side we can pursue this, the modification to combine the two processes. So the motion on the table from Don is that we we take no stance 
Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay, Martin. All right, all in favor of the motion to take no stance on this request. Same. Okay, I believe that is everyone. Okay, so. So back to the central question of uh, uh, for this project itself, do we recommend approval of this project? Uh, recommend not approving or take no stance. This this is the core question that we ha I have to answer in the letter. So so I actually do need the committee. <laughs> you to have have to answer. this one right. <laughs> And as the chair, I can't make motions. So, so that's that's right. I yeah. need the committee to, yeah, make a motion, please. I would say overall, in terms of the comments and feedback, it was uh, overwhelmingly positive towards how to make this site better, um, as well as with multiple recommendations of how this project could work. And that was the feedback that I heard. There are some concerns about uh, about uh, encouraging better climate resiliency and encouraging incorporation of other of more energy efficiencies. Um, and so I think those are those are notable um, items to list. And maybe Jason, if if the group decides to approve this, the wording about those exceptions can be strongly made. The case can be strongly made. Mm -hmm. I think I, mm -hmm. I think the fact that if we disapprove it, um, doesn't mean it wouldn't happen either. So, correct. I move we recommend approval, including okay. the language with regard to the environmental, solar, and yeah, electric vehicle charging, and uh, whatever the other one was you said. Okay. Yep. Climate. Yeah. All right, thank you, Don. So Don uh, made a motion to recommend approval, incorporating language of the details. I'll, I'll summarize for you, Don, the, the different committee comments that we had made, uh, the uh, summary of the requests and the committee stances on each request, a uh, listing of the proffers and discussion about uh, incorporating energy efficiency, solar panels, um, and, and be better with climate resiliency and, or encouraging climate resiliency. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, collect. All right, all in favor of the but motion to approve. Before, let's discuss yep. that just for a second since it's on the table. If the committee needs to vote, I think what they really think, what they really are believing on, the, on these projects. If in fact, we don't really want that kind of development there or it doesn't fit the plan per se, then we should say so. And if we don't approve the project, it doesn't mean it won't happen. We're sending a message though, that we're not getting what we're expecting to see here. So even though we can, we can add that narrative to a yes vote, um, I guess the committee needs to certainly think about this and what it is they want. What do they see in terms of how it fits with the code and what we're trying to build in Odington. I agree with Martin. I would not want Odington to be a bunch of chains everywhere. I'd like to see, and just in Anne Arundel County in general, I'd like to see more priority towards small businesses, and I'm not seeing that. Um, and I don't, I don't know what the county does to promote that aspect. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's the situation as to what's permitted by right, and as long as the developer, the applicant can uh, meet all those requirements, granted, most projects do require some level of flexibility or bonus program or modifications. Um, but that is the purpose of our, our draft master plan and draft code revisions is the opportunity to to reflect what that desire is, not only 
in spirit through the master plan, but then through actual requirements through these code revisions as to what you'd like to see in these areas. Um, and again, it's a tricky situation because you can try to dream up all the different requirements to get the type of development that you want in an area, but when it becomes so restrictive, you get nothing. Um, there's no development to spur or be a catalyst for other future development. Um, so, so we can talk about it here later tonight or, or at a future meeting where we are in the process for the master plan and code revisions, but you all will see another version of those when we do get those revisions out. So I would, I would say at that point is, is that opportune time to really make those desires made or, the, you know, voice those concerns and we can um, potentially make some of those changes in the code and the mass draft code and master plan. And so I, I point well taken, uh, points well taken, Abigail and Martin. Um, the one thing I would say on this is looking, thinking back to the previous uh, presentation about the Royal Farms on this site, one of the, I remember some of the comments that the committee had made was that based upon the location, there isn't actually a, um, uh, a gas station in that area. So it's, it's, it at least was a little bit different in that it, it was, um, close to 32. So it, it made sense for its location and that it was something new that didn't exist there. Um, I think that uh, this, what we saw today is does have the addition of, um, food, which is something that wasn't really highlighted in the, the last, um, the last proposal for this site. So that's that was the something new from today. I would slightly disagree in that we have two gas stations right on Annapolis Road. Correct. And we have okay. a 7 Eleven right down the street, which I wouldn't consider great food, <laughs> but is a convenience store. Correct. So it's not that there aren't gas stations in the, the local area, it's more of on the, the 170 strip in that area, was the comment that was one of the comments that was brought up in the last. Um, discussion. Okay, so the motion on the table and seconded was for approval, uh, as well as any other modifications anyone wants to make to the letter. Any other discussion on the question? Okay, so uh, just to just to summarize again, um, it's to for the committee to recommend approval of this project uh, containing all the committee comments uh, to highlight solar panels, activity space lighting. Uh, would like to see at least one fast charger. Proximity Route 32 creates, op creates opportunity. Uh, addressing safety hazards for people walking from activity spaces. Acknowledging that the committee takes no stance on the preliminary plan request in favor of the hiker biker trail, uh, in favor of the setback modifications in favor of surface parking in favor of landscape setback and no stance on the removal of the two specimen trees acknowledging that um, the committee encourages the county to consider climate resiliency across all of our zoning districts and uh, we also encourage developers to consider incorporation of solar panels and other energy efficiencies any other discussion Okay, hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve. Okay, I see Don, uh, Jason, Sandy, Colette, and Andrew. Okay, all opposed. Abigail and Martin, okay. So by a one, I think a five to two vote, the committee approves the development. Okay. So we will be sending a letter to the county highlighting everything that I listed. Okay. Thank you, Emily, John, and Eric, Brandon, thank you for your time and for your presentation. Thanks thank so you. Have a great evening. Committee. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is development projects, project updates. Mark. And then uh, I'm assuming that um, you're welcome to stick around from the last presentation, but you don't have to. 
Hey, Jason, before I move on, I, I just want to acknowledge all the work you went through to get that vote and to, to organize this with the group. So good job on trying to do that. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. I'm, I I hope no one feels like I'm cutting you off. My goal is to no, keep... You're, you're doing a great job, Jason. just want to acknowledge that. Okay, um, so next up is development project updates. And again, just as a reminder for everyone, if you go to aacounty.org uh, forward slash OTC on the right hand side, there is a link for development projects status or update. I forget what the exact wording is. Um, but when you click on that, you'll uh, be able to pull up this map as well as the list of the projects and where they are in the uh, development review phase or if they're at the permit phase or if actually they're under construction. Um, we also have a couple links for the capital projects and same idea, a map and a list uh, similar to this. Um, so the purpose of this is really just to provide some updates on projects um, that have changed from the last, from over the past three or so months. So um, the first item here, um, is Blue Oaks. Um, they are uh, combining their processes, so they are in the final plan phase, which is number one, sorry, on the map. Um, number eight is the Mark lot consolidation project. You all had heard a presentation uh, a few months ago. They have not, so they're now on the list, um, but they have not actually submitted um their application yet for that lot consolidation hey mark uh, quick question on that were, yep. they gonna come, were they gonna come back to the committee and talk about facade designs and so on on the outside of the building so there so there's two two things going on with the mark parking garage and this lot consolidation right now there are two separate processes right is there's this administrative administrative um item or action that needs to take place where they just need to combine the lots, right? So right, just right. race all those um, interior parcel lines or lot lines. Right. And and so that'll then, once that is accomplished, they'll come back in. Um, John Janakos of Medco will come back in and talk about what the actual submittal will be for the actual garage, the actual building itself. Um, and he'll even before that, he might come in every once in a while and provide some updates on the project. Um, but they they didn't have any updates um, over the past month, two months since we last met, right? So, um, but again, the, you'll be hearing presentations from John about the building itself as they're as they're working through the design process. There's the lot consolidation. Once the lot consolidation is accomplished, is finished then they'll be able to come in with their site plan for the garage. Okay. Um, number number nine there in uh, towards the northern part of the map here is the Odenton Business Park lot four that is under now under construction. It's sort of a flex warehouse uh, type of use and the access is from, you've got to go actually through the business park. Um, and then there's a driveway north to that site. Um, number 10 is that Mayfield self storage facility. So their site development plan was approved. Uh, they'll be able to move on to grading and permitting um, or getting grading and building permits uh, for that site. Um, the AutoZone property, which is number 16, uh, which is across from the Dairy Queen roughly, uh, they have received uh, site development plan approval as well, and they'll be able to move on to grading and building permits. Um, noted here, or, or I should say, is um, items that you don't see because they were removed were the Royal Farms, obviously, on which um, was just south of 10, number 10 here on the site that you all just had heard about. Um, that was obviously terminated, as well as uh, 1410 Annapolis Road, which is, um, if you're looking at the map, just south of number seven, that project was terminated. Cannery Crossing was also removed because that project, uh, that five, build, five home 
subdivision along Odenton Road in the historic district uh, has since been completed. So those are the development project updates, uh, or I should say quarterly development project updates. Any questions? No? OK. This is good. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Just looking at the dates, it looks like a lot of things actually, and like a lot of the older things, like there's still still motion, which is good. But a lot of uh, a lot of these projects definitely are much more recent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, um, if you're ready to move on to old business, yep. let's go to old uh, business. At, at the last meeting. There was a question about getting more information about the Odenton Mark station. And um, let me put a, a link in the chat for folks, and then I can uh, read a couple items from it. So this chat should be able to go to everybody. And so this is the Odenton, the, sorry, the, um, refurbishment or the renovation to the existing Mark Odenton station is in the in, is in the state's uh, um, capital uh, projects. And so the interior renovations, if you look on page 194 of the PDF, you might just have to type in 194 at the top of um, uh, however you're viewing this document or look for the Odenton, Mark Odenton station renovation. But the interior renovations will include new doors, lighting, flooring, seating, HVAC, paint, millwork at the customer service counter and other miscellaneous customer service amenities. Um, it'll include accessible restrooms and a water cooler. Exterior renovations will include improved drainage, exterior signage and replacement of all doors and windows. Um, while that's being renovated, there will be a temporary restroom and ticket trailer um, adjacent to the site. And I'm told that uh, work on the station will begin in summer 2023. So this summer, work will start. So no real change, Mark, on the the roof structure, the, the main footprint of the building will look the same. Yeah, it's just a renovation, it sounds yeah, like. Just a renovation. No. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mark, I have a quick question here. It looks like the majority of the funding is due for the budget year 2024. Does that mean they're going to start with a few things in 23 and then the majority of the construction is going to be in 24? Um, I don't think I can really answer that. Again, the the response I got from MTA was just that construction would start in summer 2023. So I'm not sure how they do their accounting if, you know, for six months, some of the work is happening and it's just not a lot of, you're not getting a lot of invoices, I guess, or um, there isn't a lot of costs in this for, for six months. And then most of the costs are in 2024 is what they anticipate would be my best guess. Um, okay, anything else on the Mark Odenton station renovation? Okay, then next up is the community park. Um, this, the Department of Recreation and Parks and Department of Public Works was originally planning to have a community meeting on February 8th. Um, that had also gotten rescheduled to February 20th, seeing that February 20th is a uh, county holiday. Um, they are currently looking for a new date. So, so this community meeting for the community park, which is that project across from the library, um, is currently um, pending a, a new date, okay? I'll, if you're signed up for emails, um, or I can say if you go to aacounty.org forward slash OTC, we do have a link for you to sign up for emails if you wanna sign up there um, and indicate you wanna get emails for the Odenton Town Center Master Plan. 
I'll send out an email once I get that date and I'll let the committee know as well, of course. Okay, so Mark, just to confirm, the, the planned meeting that was next Wednesday is no longer on the agenda, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. All right, I just yep. want to make sure we were very, very clear that nobody should show up to the library next Wednesday <laughs> expecting a community meeting. Right, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, had it saved on my calendar, so it's good you told me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I did too, and I, I was still going to be there, so I just want to make sure the committee knew that. <laughs> and I do want to mention that there is some good information already up on the Department of Recreation and Parks' website. You can all you can access it by again going to the OTC website. On the right hand side, we have a link for the Odenton Community Park. Um, they've got their 30% plans up for that project. Right now, they've included just I think a tot lot of pickleball court and a trail that goes through the wetlands. Um, I know the committee has talked about, or they've they've actually shown pro, uh, designs for a dog park and an amphitheater, and that would be a phase two or future phase of this park. So, so they have broken the project up into two phases. Um, but I can let them explain that into more in more detail uh, when that meeting does get scheduled. Okay. Um, Ready to move on to county and OPZ updates? Yep, let's do it. Okay. So uh, this was a so onto the new business part of the agenda. This is a request I made to Mark um, with the. I'm sorry. Of, can I can I ask one more thing for old business real quick that we didn't touch on? Sure. When is the when is the preliminary plan that was approved by this committee going before the council for the Odenton Town Center Master Plan? Because we had talked about sending a letter last year, but then it was before the election. And so we held off on the letter. And so now I'm curious, when are they voting? Right. So um, I, I don't I don't know the answer to that, but I can answer at least on the letter side. So um, earlier this week, uh, when Mark and I um, talked about the letter, uh, he said, OK, now is a good time. So as well as with some of the changes that came in, which we'll talk about in the in new business, the Federal Consolidated Appropriations Act, I redid the letter to focus more on some of the, the current priorities of the county. And so that's right now under, under I, I have it out to, to Martin and Mark so we can review to make sure that, that everything is accurate in terms of timelines and process. Uh, to send a letter saying we would like that to appear on the 2023 calendar. Um, so that's at least that's the letter. That's, I can only talk to half of it. I have to tur uh, turn to Mark for the other half of the question. Right. So the preliminary plan, we, we received comments in April, and uh, we are looking over some of those comments. Um, you know, given some of the turnover uh, with the election uh, council members, and then uh, we have a new plan officer of planning and zoning, um, we do need to run some of these potential changes based on public comment by her, get her take on, on some of these items. Um, but again, there will be a PAB draft, a planning advisory board draft, which you all will review and we'll get, you all being the, the OTCAC will review before it goes to the planning advisory board, just so that you see um, how we reacted to some of the public comments and the changes that we had made. So a date, we don't have a, a date for that just yet, um, but hopefully in the next month, I can get a timeline for you all of when that, oh, when you would okay. review the draft and then when it go to the planning advisory board and then ultimately to the county council. What is the timing when it gets to the planning advisory board? Is that, do they, I don't know how often they meet and how quickly things get on their agenda. Yeah, so they meet the second and fourth Wednesday of the month, and we just need to get a draft to them two weeks prior, uh, so they have time to review it. And then during the first planning advisory board meeting, Office of Planning and Zoning gives a presentation um, of the process and really the meat of or any of the uh, more substantial changes that have been made. And then they'll open it up for public testimony, both oral and written testimony. And it's up to them whether they want to leave it open for two weeks, three weeks, or, or however long. Um, typically, they'll close it 
a few days prior to the meeting where they'll actually deliberate just so that they have an or office planning and zoning has an opportunity to review those comments summarize them and make any other than recommendations to the planning advisory board um, a few days prior to to again that deliberations meeting so um, typically it takes about a month month and a half from introduction uh, to when they make their recommendation and again they don't have the authority it's it's just a recommendation Okay, thanks, Mark. So we're looking at a couple months here at least. Summer, mm -hmm. fall, maybe to get this thing through and passed. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yep. Um, okay. So for the for the new business, this actually ties into new business quite well. So I, I made a request to Mark uh, if he could do some summarization of some of the changes that have been made at the uh, the county level, um, as well as if there's any new vision or direction coming from the new leadership. Uh, as well as if the county executive has any any new vision statements um, that way that just the committee has an understanding of of the direction the county is taking uh, the one note i did want to make sure i i highlighted was that the federal consolidated appropriations act of 2023 provided four million dollars for the odenton mark station development so that was uh um, like there's now federal dollars onto that development project which is uh, which is a big deal so to your statement collette about like getting uh, pushing for this master plan update there are items in the work that i'm encouraging the county to realize that all of this ties together and this update is important to making sure that that all of this is tied well so uh over to you mark yeah i don't actually have anything else to add there about um the federal funds other than that there might be other uh grants available too but the county is currently working through that and um Maybe I'll have something to report um, soon, but okay. But what about the new planning and zoning lead? Um, any new vision direction from county executive? Anything like that? Right. So, um, if folks haven't heard, our former planning and zoning officer um, Steve Kai Ziegler had resigned, and we have a new planning and zoning officer, Jenny Jarkowski. Uh, she's she's from uh, Harford County, and. Um, so far, we don't have any new direction. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's it's just we just keep on uh, keeping on here. Um, I know that the Odenton Town Center master plan is still a priority. Uh, the count our our division long range planning is is still working through um, a couple of the other region plans. If if you're familiar with those, those are um plans tailored to specific areas within the county uh we're working on one in west county one in the annapolis neck area and one in the broad neck Severna park lakeshore area as well so um we do have a full slate of work here and uh but the mass odenton town center master plan is still a priority and i think colette yes we are targeting you know summer fall to get this done in 2023 Okay. Um, Thanks, Mark. But again, any of the leadership changes again won't won't impact any of the OTC AC work, um, except for the fact that we we do currently have one vacancy, and uh, again, still waiting word on on who will fill that position. So. Um, yeah, I think those are the updates that I have for county and OPZ. Okay, thanks, Mark. Any questions for Mark on what you've heard so far? Okay, any other new business um, that falls into that? All right. Hearing none, we'll open up to general public comment. So if, if uh, anyone from the public um, has any uh, statements, questions, uh, feedback, we are happy to, to take it. Um, if you could please um, um, limit your feedback to uh, a concise amount of time, um, as well as a concise number of items, uh, we would appreciate it. But does anybody, uh, if you do, just raise your hand and we uh, will let you unmute yourself. Um, if you are on the phone, I have no idea actually how um, that would work, unfortunately, because uh, we have one phone call listener. So I, I, don't, I don't know how you flag to us if you have a public comment.
Okay. All right, seeing nothing, make one more one more call. Any other public comment or any public comments? Okay, bring it back. Any other final thoughts, comments from the committee? Yeah, Jason, I have one uh, one thing to share with the group, if you don't mind. About 60 seconds, maybe I need. Uh, this last weekend, I was down at the Annapolis Town Center. I'm not sure if anybody has been there recently. Um, it is really nice there. And one of the things that makes it nice is the lighting there, the, the way the, the, the storefronts are organized, and uh, the art that's there. Uh, recently, there's a huge mural on one of the buildings between some of the stores there. It's like a sailing motif uh, piece of art mural. It's great. And they have ice skating. Uh, there's an ice skating rink put up just um, by that uh, Chinese restaurant there at the end of the turnaround. And it is really nice there. So if we get a chance to go check it out, it's it's quite nice at the Annapolis Town Center. So that's it. Great. Thanks, Martin. Any other comments, thoughts from the committee? Which gives you an opportunity to end on a humorous note. When Emily was talking about that driveway that you couldn't move toward Telegraph Road because it would be too close. And, and the specimen tree is right on top of it. I, my feeble pirate brain said, maybe you could move the tree. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, uh, could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, Martin. Second by Sandy. Any objection to adjourning? All right. Thank you, everyone. We are standing adjourned at 8.59. We beat nine o'clock. So thank, thank you, you very much. And we'll see you next month.